Hey guys, this is Bix. Welcome to Mentoring Monday. Today I'm going to talk about a very, very personal topic that comes straight from my experiences. I've been married to the same awesome woman for 32 years. Finding the right soulmate for me took some luck, but it was also the result of a great deal of self-analysis and reflection to recognize the perfect mate when I met her. In other words, I really did learn from my previous dating mistakes. I want to share with you today a topic that I call how to select the perfect soulmate. Now this topic will have nothing to do with how to meet your soulmate. I'm not an expert on dating apps and how to meet your mate in the dating scene. I'm a little out of practice. This talk has more to do with <clears throat> once you meet and date someone, how do they know if they're the perfect soulmate? Although I do think meeting the right person is a numbers game. The more people you meet, the higher the probability of finding the right person. Also, when I say the perfect soulmate, I mean they're perfect for you. Nobody's perfect, but there is somebody out there who is perfect for you. I want to emphasize I don't proclaim to know everything there is to know about this topic. I'm only sharing what has worked for me. Okay, here are some areas to explore with your potential soulmate to determine if they are the right fit. Number one, what is the relationship like with his or her family? This was extremely important for me. I understand that we cannot choose our parents or our family, but it's a huge part of a person's makeup from their childhood and their family experiences. In my case, I was very interested in my future wife's relationship with her father. Just through relationships, I sort of figured this out. I found that I matched up much better with people who had a high self-esteem. And self-esteem or lack thereof comes from the family. And in a female's case, again, my personal opinion, I believe much of it is determined by the relationship with her father. This sounds a little crazy, but I would literally ask about the family relationship question on the first date. Not just dive into it, but sort of work my way around to the topic. <clears throat> Once I learned this, it saved me a lot of time by avoiding potentially bad relationships. Also, when you get serious about someone, their family, whether it's good or bad, becomes your family. So it's important to understand what you need. I needed a solid nurturing family to become part of besides my immediate family. A family that I'd look forward to seeing and being with. I was very fortunate that my wife had a wonderful mother, father, and an awesome family. Not everybody has this benefit, so be aware of what you need early on in the relationship or this could turn into a huge problem later on. Do your personalities match? By that I mean, do they complement each other? If you're too much like uh, type A personalities, your personalities will clash. If you complement each other, they will mesh like two hands going together. So when I met my wife, for example, I was a taker and she was a giver. She was easygoing and compassionate. I was very intense. And very driven. I'm very witty and try to be funny and she enjoys humor and she always laughs at my jokes. So our differences meshed up perfectly because they made each one of us better when we're together. Here's a big one. Do you have good chemistry? So what exactly is good chemistry? This is really hard to define. It's just a combination of a lot of little things that just sort of line up. We just clicked. Everything just seemed easy. No arguments. Things just flowed, including great conversations. I'm telling you, it's a recipe for disaster if you constantly argue early on in the relationship. So if this happens, run. It, you don't have good chemistry if you argue too much. And good chemistry is a must. Physical attraction. Of course you have to be physically attracted to each other, but this means on the inside and the outside. 
Have you ever met a really attractive person until they open their mouth? Our youthful looks will fade over time. So physical attraction and who the person is on the inside are equally as important. Similar interests. Like I said, it's very important for your personalities to be different in complementary ways, but you must have similar interests. Otherwise, when you get older, you don't want to spend time together. I've got married friends that they spend a lot of time doing different things. My wife and I both have always loved dance music. We actually met at a dance club. Now we love trance music. We both like to travel. We both like fashion, great food, great wine. She loves to cook and I love to eat. Haha. -ha. We love nature. We both wanted to have children. We both value family. We're the same religion and our political interests align. I've been fortunate that after 32 years, I still enjoy spending time with my wife. Now, I'm not saying you have to be the same religion, but it does make things a little easier if that's important to you. But know all these things about each other up front early on in the relationship. Work ethic levels. <clears throat> so what do I mean by this? If one person in the relationship is a hard worker and the other person is lazy, then this won't work over time. For me, it was important that my spouse worked very hard. Not necessarily the same work as me, but the work ethic is there. I've seen relationships where the lazy person pulls down the hardworking person. So she works hard, my wife works hard, and her areas of responsibility, and I do the same in mine. The drama meter, uh, in other words, high maintenance versus low maintenance. Do you need a high maintenance person you can enjoy taking care of? Or do you do better with a low maintenance person? Personally, I never succeeded in a relationship with a high maintenance person, maybe because I'm the high maintenance person. It was just not a good fit for my personality. So know what's best for you. Okay, this last part of today's topic are questions to ask yourself to help improve the chances that you are with the perfect soulmate. Not really a question, but one plus one equals three. Are you a better and more complete person with your mate or without? Because my wife's strengths were different than mine, I felt like I was a much better person with her in my life. She helped make me a more complete person and ultimately more successful in my life and my business career. She helped me see things to improve on that I could not see on my own. The same was true for her. So together, we are greater than the sum of our parts. In other words, one plus one equals three. Another way to look at this question is, am I better off with this person in my life? Do I feel better about myself with this person in my life? I've been in dating relationships where the answer was no. I was better off without this person in my life. Is the relationship growing, staying the same, or going backwards? In reality, you either grow or die. So if the relationship's not growing and improving or staying the same, then it's dying. With the perfect mate, your relationship is mostly growing. Is my mate the best person I've ever dated by far compared to others that I've dated? I know most comparisons that we make are usually not good, but in this case, the answer should be yes. How can you be sure? It should be obvious. If you're not sure, then the answer is probably no. In my case, did I marry up? The answer is most definitely yes. How will your soulmate react when you find yourself in a very challenging situation? And vice versa. Will they support you or be overly needy or selfish? Will they be willing to sacrifice with you? Here's an example. When I started my own company, I was apart from my wife and kids for nine months, about 400 miles apart, till we could sell our house and move to our new city. I'd come home on weekends about three times a month. This was extremely difficult for both of us. Never once did my wife complain and give me a guilt trip for being away or working too hard. She was very supportive and it paid off in the long run, just like she's supportive of me being a trance DJ and a music producer at my 
later years. So when you get into a challenging situation, you'll need a mate who does what it takes to support you and vice versa in the relationship. The last thing, pretty big question, are you best friends? Because if you're not, this will play out over time and the relationship won't work. Well, there you have it. My advice and experience for finding your perfect soulmate. I was very fortunate that it worked for me but it took me a lot of failures to figure it out. You have to put in the work to learn what you really need. So until next week, this is Vic signing off. Remember, it's never too late to reinvent yourself. Cheers.